Hello there, today I'm going to show you how to install a Pi Music Box onto your Raspberry Pi. Pi Music Box enables you to stream music to your Raspberry Pi, which will then output it to an external speaker, external sound card, whatever you need. And as it says here, it is literally the Swiss Army knife of streaming music. I currently have it running on a computer on my, or on a Raspberry Pi on my network, and we can see here this is its main page. If you click settings, this is literally all the services it has. And you could probably get more if you put enough effort into it, as well as connecting it to network drives, even music files on the Raspberry Pi. Um, you can change your audio settings, um, hardware mixers. It's just crazy. Um, all this good stuff, network, yeah, networking stuff. And yeah, so it's quite simple. And it's actually comparable to a Google, what's it called? Google Chromecast Audio. Um, it's not compatible with Chromecast devices, as far as I know. So, like, you can't connect it to your Google Home. Um, but what you can do is you can go into the Spotify app on your phone. And this is nice for older speakers that, you, you, that have, like, docks on them, but you can't use it anymore. But it still has a headphone jack. And it's really inconvenient to just set your phone by the speaker. So this is actually what I've done with this. So, yeah. So you go to their website. It's pymusicbox.com. And then you go to the download part. Um, and then there are also how-tos. But I'm doing that here. So, yeah. It's a very easy download. You can just click older releases. But it does actually have the most recent one up top. Um, then you just choose the music box dot or underscore v insert a bunch of numbers here dot zip um you can also go back and get older versions if you really want to but i don't really recommend it um this is actually compatible with any raspberry pi device um i'm not sure about zeros or raspberry pi zeros but i would assume it is compatible so yeah uh, let's see Pi Zero, yep, okay, it does support the Pi Zero W. Um, so that's pretty nice, and it's onboard Wi Fi. Okay, that's broken. Um, I was trying to get that to work earlier today, and now I know why it doesn't work. Uh, come on. Come on. There we go. So then, once you have it downloaded, you'll have to extract it somewhere. You won't have to extract the entire thing if you don't want to. You just have to extract music box, insert numbers here, dot image, um, which I've already done on my Seagate here. Um, oh, why did I let it install? Whatever. Um, so you grab that. You remember, you figure out where that location is. Um, you can click up here. It'll tell you. Otherwise, cl right click on it, properties, and gives you the location there. And then you're going to want a program called Win32 Disk Imager. Now, you can get this simply by searching Win32 Disk Imager. Okay, so as far as I'm aware, Win32 Disk Imager is actually only available on SourceForge. Um, oh, wait, maybe not. Okay, Win32 Disk Imager is allegedly only available on SourceForge. Um, not sure about that, but I do remember installing it from SourceForge the last time I got it. So go download it from SourceForge. Um, here's the link. Otherwise, just search Win32 Disk Imager. It's the first thing to come up. Make sure it's SourceForge. Um, I highly recommend before you run anything you download from the internet, you right click on it and click Scan with Windows Defender. It'll scan it. Or even scan it with like Malwarebytes which takes a bit longer um, but it does get the job done um, it's got to check for updates and boom so I just recommend scanning things you download from the internet um, because it's not fun to get viruses then install it and then open it up um, I have an older version actually uh, but it should look similar if not the same um, then click here and you can find your Thing. So we'll probably start on this PC, and in my case I just go here, 
click that, and then you'll have to insert a micro USB card, um, which I don't have one laying around. Brilliant. Okay. One moment. Okay, so I actually have one here that I have an old version of Raspbian running on, and it's it it's quite an impressive <laughs> micro SD card, or the OS. It's an impressive story with the OS because this this OS like formatted itself so many times. Um, if you have an old micro SD card that already has an OS on it. What you want to do is you're going to want to get a software called SD card formatter because in some cases you'll get that and then if you format it oh I see that would explain it oh my god so I have a USB that's annoying I have an insignia micro SD card SD card reader, and half the time it doesn't work, and it's greatly annoying. Yep, this is pissing me off. <sighs> okay, I'm grabbing the SD card adapter, unless I actually completely destroyed the SD card, which isn't completely unlikely to happen, because I've done that a few times. It's not very fun to deal with. Okay. There we go. Okay, I get that. Okay, I still get that. Okay. So if you are if you have a micro SD Oh my god. <laughs> if you have a micro SD card or SD card that you put into your computer and it's got this that happens, you're gonna to want to get SD card formatter because it's actually really good at detecting these issues and you can check either one and it will realize that it is just a, you know, dual partitioned SD card. Which is annoying to fix but it takes like 30 seconds, less than 30 seconds to do. And yeah, once you've got your SD card formatted, go back to Win32 Disk Imager um, select the SD card by the device name, in this case it is F, and then once you've got, one, make sure you still have all this stuff selected, and then click write, and then it'll write it, and yeah, oh my god. <laughs> also, I, I have no clue how I managed to go through so much stuff. I don't know how I go through so much storage. This one has nothing on it, basically, that's of any use. And this one has partial Steam library and an entire two years, three years worth of YouTube. So yeah. So once this thing is done downloading, or no, writing to your SD card, you'll have some other information to go over. So yeah. Can't wait for that one. Okay, so, okay, now it's going to get all mad at me and do this whole thing where it opens and closes everything about 150 times, and, okay, so, okay, so, once you've, or, so, once you've, in, okay, so, once your computer finishes writing the OS to the micro SD card or SD card, whatever you use, you're going to want to open up the one that you can access. In my case it's a full 55, 56 megabytes. Um, and then open that up, as I've said, and then go to config. And then in here you're going to have to choose settings. Now, you have to do this for network no matter what. So, you know, test. There's no real point in me typing this, but you know, test 
Um, so where I have test written down, you put your Wi-Fi network name and password. Um, so where it says Wi-Fi network, you're going to want to choose a name of a Wi-Fi network from the list of Wi-Fi's you have on your computer or phone, whatever. And then for the Wi-Fi password, if you have one, you know, put it in there. So you must have WPA security enabled. You can't just have no security on your network for this to work. Don't ask me why, but yeah. Apparently you can enable it if you really want to put enough effort into it, but you know, it's not really worth it. Now you could go from here and connect to your thing, it'll give you the thing, or your Pi's IP address once you're connected to it, or once you're on your internet. Um, and then you can just go to its web page and mess around with its configs. But, a couple of the times, well every time I've done that, it's actually corrupted its file system. So I don't recommend doing the method of going into here and messing around with all this stuff because it's not very legit and it will most likely delete your entire file system or corrupt it, where is this? So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to scroll through here and look for these things that say like Spotify, uh, Last FM, SoundCloud, Google Music, YouTube, Durbel, uh, TuneIn Radio, all this good stuff. Um, so I'm, I personally use Spotify, so I'm going to use that as an example. So highlight false, or just delete false and then type true. And then for your username, you have to go to your Spotify account, get your new username, then enter your password. And then you, to get your client ID and client secret, you're going to want to go to this website here, sign in with Spotify, and then it'll give you that stuff. Now, don't close that page yet, um, because, you know, it's not a good idea yet, because we're not done. Um, you could stop there, but I highly recommend enabling Spotify web. Now, it'll give you a thing for Spotify. Here, let's just go over here. Mm -hmm. Copy. Paste. Hopefully it doesn't still have my Spotify info in there. No, it doesn't. Okay, so in this website, here's your client ID on this one. So that's for just oop, that's Spotify. That's just for just Spotify, this one. But then if you want Spotify web, you're gonna use this lower one here. So yeah. Um as with the previous one, you have to make that true, otherwise it won't enable. And your client ID, client secret. Um, then at the bottom, there's more stuff. Um, where is Spotify Connect? Aha! So where it says streaming, um, it's quite far down. You're going to want to click where it says enable connect. Um, instead of it saying false, you're just going to have to press spacebar and then type true. And yeah, after that, you're good you are now ready to use your music box. So take your micro SD card or SD card or whatever you're using out of your computer and then place it into your Raspberry Pi, power on your Raspberry Pi, wait until it connects to the internet which takes a little while and then go to its um, IP address that it gives you which in my case is 192.168.0.35 but earlier today on a previous installation of the OS I had 192.168.0.26 I'm sorry I'm talking so fast, but yeah, thank you for watching this video. I will see you next time. Goodbye.